In this video, we're going to look at base 64 encoding in C Sharp. This is going to be a really quick tutorial, but I just wanted to explain situations where base 64 encoding could be helpful and how to go do it because it's really straightforward in C Sharp. Before I dive in, just a quick reminder to check that pinned comment for my newsletter. Well, what is base 64 encoding and why should we care? Well, we know in programming when we want to show text or represent readable characters, we have strings to work with. And a lot of the times when we're thinking about things like HTTP requests and other stuff like that, we're able to just work with strings and it's really straightforward. But there's other times where we want to be able to take a string and serialize it into binary data. In those situations, we can take an encoding like UTF-8 and then encode the string into bytes. But what about the situations where you need a little bit of both? What happens when you want to take binary data because it's representing something that isn't just a string and you need to transfer it as a string? It's almost the exact opposite problem. Well, that's where base64 encoding can come into play. So the way base64 encoding works is that we're able to take binary data. So that means taking single bytes that represent the range from zero to 255. So 256 different representations. And we can take arrays of that and have them as human readable characters. And where base64 comes from, the 64 part, is that we have 64 different characters that we can map that binary data to. So it's unlikely that you'd want to go send your friend a picture, but you want to have it in human readable characters. Like that would seem kind of silly. However, if you were working with a text-based protocol and you needed to be able to take the bytes of the picture and have that represented as human readable characters, then converting that picture to base64 could be totally useful in that situation. So now that you have a rough idea of what we're talking about, let's jump over to Visual Studio and we'll see how you can leverage base64 encoding. We're going to go from a string two bytes to a base64 string and then we're going to go all the way back and see how that works. So let's go check it out. All right on my screen here I have something really simple that's just going to start by reading some input and putting that into a variable here. So on line three we'll take whatever's on the console and we'll stick that into the variable that's called input. From there we're going to get the binary representation of input. So we can use the UTF-8 encoding right here and then get the bytes for the input and we'll store that into this variable called bytes. So at this point we have a string called input and we have a byte array called bytes. But if we want to be able to work with base64 encoding and have that binary data represented as a string again, what's the next step? Well it's really simple actually. On line 7 you can see this one simple call that we make to the convert static class and it has a method called to base64 string. We're able to pass in that byte array and then the result of that is going to be yet another string but it's going to be those bytes encoded as base64. Let's go ahead and have this printed to the console and see what happens when we put some information into our program. In order to make this program a little bit more interesting I'm going to put a while loop around this so we can keep testing some input. So that was really cool I ended up typing while true above all of the code and copilot actually just rewrote the entire program for me. Pretty awesome. Let's go run it. All right, now that our program's running, we can see that it says enter a string to encode. So I will put dev leader and we'll see what happens when I press enter and we get the encoded string. So the base64 encoded string that we see here is right here and you can see that it's kind of interesting because this is not the same string at all. What's another interesting characteristic about this? And I want you to pay close attention to this string that I have highlighted and what the input was, which was dev leader. Well, one characteristic that sticks out to me is of course that they're both human readable characters. In fact, we don't have any weird symbols or anything else coming up. The strangest thing that we kind of see here are some equal signs. These aren't really alphanumeric, but there are a couple of extra symbols, but there's still nothing weird like uh, boxes that sometimes show up when you don't have the right font or encoding kind of going on. So they're, they're human readable and like I said it's base 64 so the idea behind that is it's going to be um, alphanumeric only with a couple of extra symbols like equals, plus signs, and slashes. But one other interesting characteristic about this is the length. So let's look at the length of dev leader here which I have highlighted and this font is of course monospace so if I highlight this you can see that it's a little bit longer than dev leader. 
And that's going to be a characteristic in general of base 64 encoding that you're on average going to have about a four over three multiplier on the length of what you're trying to encode. And that's something to keep in mind because if space is really important to you, then base 64 encoding is going to inflate things a little bit. It might not be the best option. Let's put in a really similar string and see what the output looks like. All right, if we compare dev leader with the number two on the end, it's very similar actually. And what I wanted to point out about this is that if we're thinking about something that's cryptographic, if you change a single bit in something that's truly cryptographic, the entire representation is going to change, even if one bit is different. Now with base 64 encoding, it's not a cryptographic encoding. All that we're doing is converting the bytes that are representing the string dev leader 2 in this case. And that's why if you look at the beginning of this, what I have highlighted up to C, it's identical to what we have in the first case up here. What ends up changing is because the last character, when we add the 2 onto the end, we're going to end up having a different character representation right at the end because it's a different set of bits right at the end. The reason I wanted to call this out is because if you're thinking about writing some of your first programs, programs and you need to be able to store some things like encoding things to base 64 is not some secret. It's not a good way to encrypt things and hide things. So please don't think that you're going to be able to put something to base 64 and not get it back. In fact, let's go look at that right now in terms of how we can recover stuff from base 64. We'll go the opposite way. So because I don't want to think about trying to memorize or copy and paste some base 64, let's just extend this a little bit more. So I'm just using Copilot here and pressing enter and tab a few times and let's see if it figures out what we need to write. So we'll get the input brought back in and then from there it looks like it can't figure out exactly what I want to do but that's okay. So we'll put in a base64 string and then we're going to use the opposite of this convert to base64 string. It looks like Copilot knows how to go the other way when you give it a bit of a hint. All right so the way that our program is set up now once we encode something we'll have the opportunity to decode it right after. So what I'm going to be able to to do is highlight, copy, and paste what we just encoded, and we should be able to recover it exactly as it was. And you can see on my screen here on line 10, to base64 string is essentially the opposite of what's on line 18 from base64 string. And one of the reasons that I'm pointing this out to you is because when we're talking about converting between types, in this case we're talking about going from strings to binary representation, and I wanted to point out that there is full resolution in this conversion. So that means that you can take any binary data, put it to base64, and go back from base64 to binary data, and you will never lose resolution in your data. And what I mean by that is that because we're mapping between two different uh, ranges of possible data, you're not going to be in a position where it's lossy. So you end up going one way, trying to recover it, and all of a sudden there's not enough resolution to get the full message back. An example of something that's lossy is maybe doing something like image compression, where you end up losing some of the data that represents your picture. That's why you end up having fewer bytes. But to get it fully back to normal, that data is gone, so it's going to be lossy. There is lossless compression as well, but in this case when we're talking about this conversion, this is a lossless conversion of data. Let's go prove it. Alright, let's try again with dev leader put into here and we should get a familiar base64 string. I'm going to go ahead and copy that. So now that it's copied and on my clipboard, once I paste it in, let's go decode it and hopefully we get dev leader back exactly. Wait a second, what went wrong here? We missed one step, and if you were paying attention, you would have caught this. But when we go from base64 to a byte array, the thing is that that's not printable yet. There's one more step, and that's because in this conversation, we're essentially going string, byte array, string. It's just that one of those versions of the string is a base64 encoded string. So we're missing one step because we've gone to a byte array now, but we have to go to a human readable string that's not base64. So let's go back to the code and see what step we're missing. All right, so if we look in the code here, this decoded variable that we have is actually a byte array, and what we need to have is a string. So if we look back up here on line eight, we can see that this is where we're doing something with the UTF-8 encoding. And in fact, we want to be able to do that on this decoded byte array. 
So again, we're going from a string here, putting that into a byte array, and then we need to go from a byte array back to a string. So let's go try putting the opposite of UTF-8 get bytes. All right, with that one extra line added in, we are getting the string from the decoded byte array, and we get UTF-8 decoded containing that string now. So if we print that to the console, this should work, right? Now we have this on our clipboard, and I will paste it right in here, and let's get a drum roll going. Boom, we get right back to dev leader. So just to reiterate, because these are both string representations, we need to be able to go from one string to a byte array and back to a string. It's just that one of these has the extra step of the base64 encoding. All right, well, that's gonna wrap up this video on base64 encoding in C Sharp. As you can see, it's only three lines of code to be able to get some string input to convert that into a byte array, and then from there into a base64 string. Keep in mind that when you're going from binary data to a base64 string, there is going to be an inflation in size. It's about a four over three ratio of the size that you'll have in the end. So where might you be using base64 encoding? Feel free to sound off in the comments. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.